Arriving back from war, the young Tiberius Gracchus returns to a Rome he does not recognise. Where once his men of the legion farmed, now slaves work the land for rich noblemen in vast plantations. And his men and their family are now penniless and without a home. Tiberius takes it upon himself to fight for the people against his very own class, the rich noblemen, and restore their land to them. Tiberius decides to run for the office of Tribune, an office which is meant to curb the power of rich noblemen of Rome, which has since been corrupted. Tiberius, however, finds allies in the Senate, sympathetic to the plight of the common people. You see, Tiberius isn't the only person of his class to think that the increase in wealth among the nobility is a bad thing. Many people think that it is causing a problem in the Roman Republic. Tiberius eventually marries one of his more prominent allies' daughter, and together they begin to formulate a plan, and a law indeed, to get the poor back their land. Using this as a campaign slogan, Tiberius is elected to the office of Tribune. Having secured the office of Tribune, Tiberius begins to formulate his law, and he actually comes up with a logical reason as to why this law should get through the Senate. You see, Tiberius's law makes perfect sense on paper. The more people who own property, the larger the tax harvest is. It also increases the recruiting pool, as you need to be a property owner to join the Roman military. He also includes an incentive for the noblemen to give up their land and give it back to the poor, saying that they will be compensated for this loss of income. The Roman Senate, however, is mainly made up of these rich noblemen, and as a result, they do not want this law to get through the Senate. This will essentially cut all of their income in half, and they don't want that. They have spent lots of money trying to buy this land, and they don't want to just lose it, as it's a form of income for them, and it is also making them a lot of money. So as a result, they don't really let Tiberius' law get to the Senate. Tiberius, therefore, needs to think out of the box if he wants this law to pass at all. Now, being a tribune means that you get to preside over the people's assembly. This is essentially where laws can be passed through the people. Now, there are multiple tribunes that are elected because the role of keeping the rich noblemen in check is actually quite a big one. So Tiberius decides that he's going to try and get his law passed through the people's assembly. However, as I stated before, the office of tribune is extremely corrupt at this stage. The rich noblemen have the other tribunes completely under their thumb. They are bribing them. One of these tribunes is a man called Octavius. Now, Octavius is again from a nobleman's family. He is one of the people that own these vast property estates. So anyway, when Tiberius asks for the People's Assemblies to be open so that they can pass laws, Octavius vetoes this. The veto is the power that the Tribune has to stop laws getting through the Senate that will directly affect the people. This means that, today at least, Tiberius can't push his law through the People's Assembly. And as long as Octavian remains vetoing his plea to open up the Public Assembly for vote, he will not get his law through. This is where Tiberius most likely breaks the law. He actually orders Octavius to be removed from the public assembly. Now, in Rome, if you hold an office in the Senate, be it tribune, consul, any kind of office, you are protected, you are legally immune, and you also can't be touched. So Tiberius has Octavius removed forcibly, thus breaking the law which says that a tribune cannot be forcibly removed or touched or harmed in any sort of way. Tiberius justifies this by saying that Octavius isn't defending the rights of the people and therefore shouldn't really be treated as a tribune. However, Tiberius knows in the back of his head that Octavius is just going to return tomorrow and the exact same thing is going to happen again and again and again. So how is he going to get his law through the public assembly? How is he going to stop the other tribunes who are also being bribed by the Senate 
from stopping his law getting to the public assembly in the future. Tiberius comes up on the spot with a radical solution. Following Octavius's removal, the public assembly then begins its day-to-day -day affairs, asking the tribunes to open up the public buildings. So the law courts are asked to open. Tiberius stands up and says, no, veto. He's effectively stopped the law courts from opening for today. They then ask that the public treasury is opened, to which Tiberius stands up and says, no, veto. So the treasury can't be accessed for today. This goes on and on and on, and essentially over a matter of weeks, Tiberius grounds the productivity of Rome to a complete standstill. He's effectively holding Rome hostage with his tribune veto powers. Forced by the economic factor of the fact that Rome's economy isn't moving because nothing is opened, because Tiberius has said they cannot open, the Roman Senate eventually caves in and agrees to back Tiberius's bill. Only then does Tiberius decide that the law courts can open and the public treasury can be opened. This doesn't make him a popular person. It makes him a very popular person with the people. But remember, the rich noblemen have the power. They are in charge of the running of the state. And through his actions, Tiberius has made a lot of political enemies. Thanks for watching and listening to our video. If you like the channel, consider subscribing to Ancient History Guy. Or, if you really like the channel, head on over to our Patreon feed. There, for as little as $1 a month, you can gain access to exclusive documentaries, behind the scene footage, and videos before they're live on YouTube. All sources are listed and linked in the description below. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I've been the Ancient History Guy, and as always, I'll be seeing you later.